As the generations of America establish themselves in the United States, vast quantities of influential characteristics dictate their political participation and opinions. Two of these deciding factors seem to be efficacy and motivation. Both efficacy and motivation mold an individual to who they are as a citizen. There is one question that many Americans may have trouble answering. What does it mean to be a good citizen? To be a good citizen, you should know what's going on in your community by knowing what's going on in your local, state, and federal government. And citizens can know this information by going through the internet, watching TV, listening to the radio, and getting involved in community meetings. I think there's a lot of responsibilities that we have associated with citizenship. And so to be a good citizen, I think, does require you to be knowledgeable and um, searching for more information about what's going on in, in your community and in the larger and nationally. I think that, first of all, to be a good citizen, uh, something we touched on before, is to be informed. Um, I think that, uh, obviously, as a political organization leaders here uh, to us, it's very, very important that people stay informed about politics and, you know, use their voice in a meaningful way. Well, a good citizen, certainly, number one, is law-abiding. You know, you, you have to understand the laws of governance, in, in a sense, um, what keeps a community together, and, and the traditions that are handed down from one generation to another within the community, not to say that new traditions can't be started, and that's where the young people come in. A good citizen should help keep their community clean by knowing their trash and recycling programs. So I think being aware and being, um, I don't know, contemplative about these issues is, is one of the responsibilities. Staying involved in your community, um, making sure you know that you care for the people around. Be law-abiding, understand your past, and that shapes your, your future and uh, giving back in, in a sense. Helping out with the elderly in the community. And then I think there's, you know, voting. So staying involved in your community. It's your time, your talent, or your treasure. That's what, what makes a good community. I would disagree with uh, some people's uh, ideas, but, you know, well, I think um, sort of, you know, do have duties as, as a citizen. I think some things, uh, I don't think you have a duty to be politically involved. I don't think you have a duty to uh, vote or or so on. In fact, I don't think that uh, the country benefits from everybody feeling like they have to do all of those things. As you could see, many people agree what it means to be a good citizen. One must be involved in the community, their local government, voting, and giving back. What is behind all of this political participation? What drives an individual to get involved? The answer is efficacy. What factors affect someone's efficacy? How does this in turn motivate people? First, we must analyze what is efficacy and how do we measure it. Oh, you, you, you tied into some key sort of words to think about it. Is so, what are you measuring? So, the measuring behaviors is a lot different than measuring attitudes. So, you know, te we tend to think of attitudes are right there. They're things that we can't see. So they're as good as the questions that you ask. So if you want to measure something like political efficacy, for example, you know, well, what is political efficacy? It's some sense that I, have, as an individual, have that I can, you know, 
have make change in, in the government or make change in, in how we are governed. That construct and then you break it down into maybe smaller constructs and then you eventually write items to measure that. Now that we know what efficacy is and how we measure it, now we will examine the different factors that influences one's efficacy. I, mean, I think you could break this into a, a number of types of factors. There's some that sort of relate to identity, what sort of, you know, uh, what groups you feel a part of, what community mm -hmm. you feel. Did you hear that? Professor Talk said that efficacy is developed with a sense of community, which is constant with many researchers. Uh, and so, you know, individuals who feel, you know, identify with, say, a, a minority group who's perceived as having a lot of power may feel less sort of efficacy than individuals who identify, you know, more broadly, say, individuals who identify as American. Parents and um, community growing up have a significant uh, impact. But what about media? How does media affect one's self-efficacy? Benjamin Toff, I am a first-year uh, graduate student in the political science department. A political scientist named Marcus Pryor. The insight, in my mind, from from what he's arguing, is that there is a opportunity cost to any sort of media consumption. Which is interesting. Because as more media becomes available to the public, each citizen must take the time to attain information. If information is not attained, they may not feel as effective in society. But there is one thing that can help citizens attain information, and it all starts at the historical society. Newspapers are on very bad quality paper, so we regularly microfilm them and throw them throw the originals away. Um, we have for all practical purposes, every newspaper ever published in the state of Wisconsin for which anybody has ever been able to find copies. So, lots of stuff on microfilm um, and in the newspapers. The archives, we are the state archives, so that's state government records. We also have letters, diaries, the records of labor unions, the records of all kinds of different organizations. We have some companies. Um, once again, it's one of the largest archival collections in the country. Starting point is our website, which is simply wisconsinhistory.org. And now that newsreels are being preserved, and all of the information is also available online, the opportunity to attain information is increasing. The more information someone has, the more effective they can feel. We've already talked to one professor about efficacy. Now let's see what the head of the department has to say. If you are reasonably confident that you can do, you can accomplish the things that you really like to do, you're efficacious. I don't feel non-efficacious because I can't pass a railroad bill. Local things that impact me, I can have some impact on, and national things that I care about. I can make a contribution toward. And in that sense, I'm efficacious. You, you want to be careful in thinking about efficacy and trust as if they were a sort of paper and pencil test. You tick this, check the six right boxes and you're efficacious. An awful lot of it is kind of structural. You have some connection to the community that you live in. Um, do you know the neighbors or the other people who are active in politics so that if you had something really bothering you, you know who to talk to? Which is exactly what Professor Talk said. Uh, that's sort of low grade by comparison to the sort of high flown notions of efficacy. But that's really, a lot of that is really where the rubber hits the road. I mean, it's sort of the, the real reality of the matter. You heard it from the man himself, the head of the department. You can only be efficacious in the things you can control the things you are interested in. But what about what motivates someone to get interested? What better place to talk about motivation than the Boys and Girls Club of Kenosha? We have indoor soccer that's ran out of here. We also have flag football for middle and high school youth. Um, also flag football for adults. 
that is also taking place in here. She does also update this board every day to show the kids what's going on throughout the day. So from 10 to 12 when they come in, it's members' choice. 12.30 to 1 is lunch. We provide lunch at no extra cost because membership is $15 a year. From 1 to 2, it shows, you know, in the art room they were making gift bags. I assume this is for last week on Thursday. Um, and so forth. Each area there's something going on. And then again from 2 to 4 and they get to switch into something else. I know if I were to attend the Boys and Girls Club, I would be motivated. Let's see what the president of the board of the Boys and Girls Club has to say about all of this motivation. My name is Roddy Dmitrievich. I'm the current board president of the CYC Board of Directors. You think about it a little bit, and you know, motivation is a it's kind of an intrinsic thing that comes from within. Um, certainly, you know, you've been brought up in, in, in our case, our community, our Kenosha community, to give back in a certain sense. Um, you, you had role models as a youth that you looked up to, whether they were teachers, many teachers certainly, and you know, not that they necessarily inspired you or motivated you to give back, but I think as it, it instilled leadership qualities along the way. And with leadership comes responsibility, and, and it's that responsibility that involves giving back, you know, in terms of giving 105 or 110 percent, or, or giving back, in my case, as well, uh, in a not-for-profit community setting through the Boys and Girls Club. It gives them an identity, it, and it gives them space, you know, and with, with young people, they need, um, they need to know what the boundaries are, but they also need to be able to go and, and collaborate with their own peers. And, and feel like they belong to a team, even if they don't formally belong to a sports team. Here they have that, that setting and environment um, kind of unencumbered and able to be creative using new technologies that, that we have available. Um, that's, that's what it allows them to do is, is to be part of a team, gives them space to be creative and, and, and uh, collaborate with their peers. So the Boys and Girls Club gives the young people a place to go, to feel at home. This sense of community is what makes them have a feeling of effectiveness. It's funny how each person interviewed agreed that it was this sense of community that really creates this effectiveness. We also had the opportunity to talk to Democratic Representative Peter Barca about motivation. From my life in the private sector. Um, I ran a, a company called Aurora Associates International, and we did long-term development projects around the globe. We worked uh, many times in developing countries to help them to advance their society. Again, uh, Guyana is, uh, is a small country bordering Venezuela in the north part of South America. Uh, it's the only English-speaking country in South America, um, and they're, they have significant uh, polarization, but along racial lines. So we were hired in our group as part of a consortium to go there and try and find ways to bridge the gaps. Seeing that he has his own company dealing with motivation, Mr. Barkin knows what he's talking about. Our area here in Kenosha, um, how do you motivate people to get involved? First of all, if you have uh, a problem or an issue that people care about, if you can identify the problem, look at a potential solution, and then break it down so people can understand if I participate, my role could be to accomplish uh, you know, this first goal. I think that can be very motivating for people. But there is one thing that Mr. Barker said that really caught my attention.
This idea that getting involved in politics can be very easy can only do wonders for someone's efficacy and motivation. We were also given the opportunity to interview Ann Brodick, who is on the Board of Trustees in Wind Point. Ms. Brodick started the Village of Wind Point's Hazardous Household Waste Pickup Program. And um, I am a trustee in the Village of Wind Point, and I'm also on the Board of Directors for the Wisconsin League of Conservation Voters. And we did it for our community, we had it in our community. It was very easy for people to take advantage of this one Saturday morning a year, and people would come through for free, they could drop off all their stuff. I think that they realize that they're, you know, it's a, I remember when I first got on the board, people called me and say, what do I do with paint cans, that kind of stuff. I think people feel like they're doing a good thing when they take care of their stuff the right way. And so that gets a little bit involved. You know, every bit of behavior that you, you do that's positive, I think, is, a, is kind of like it reinforces you more positive behavior. This is a great way for the people of Wind Point to get involved in their community. So now we know. Efficacy is the feeling of being effective in politics, in the community, and in pretty much everything. A sense of community can bring upon this feeling of effectiveness. Media can have a large impact on how effective we think we are. And when young people are motivated, they feel they can make a difference. 